Hey, muddy dog. I'm coming to get y'all. Coming to check on y'all. Yeah. So, welcome to Appalachia's homestead. Let's find a spot and talk about why Granny made it and you may not. Yeah, I said that. Well, we're finally getting this weather. You know, I have been thinking about talking about this subject for a couple of days and then life happens and I get distracted and I do other things. And then what's so funny is I always know that if God wants me to make a video on something or if something, somebody needs to hear the message or, you know, maybe just needs a little encouragement or whatever, it all comes back around again and I end up filming it. So some, somebody out there, I don't know who you are. You need to hear this. You need to hear it. So I'm just gonna cut to the chase. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it because frankly, I think that's boring when you do and I'm not about trying to uh, protect your feelings today. <laughs> that's part of the problem with everything that we see is that everybody is too busy trying to protect other people's feelings or you're too sensitive and you need your, yours protected. Well, again, that's why Granny made it, and maybe you won't. Now, I know somebody's going to say, that is so negative, and that is so doomsday. Well, okay, maybe you need a dose of that today. Maybe that will harden you up a little bit, make your hide a little bit thicker. I don't know. That's not for me to decide. That's for you to decide. But here are some things that I've been thinking about this week over several different things, and I'll get into that, of why I'm choosing these top three things of why Granny made it. And you probably won't, kid. Let me find me a spot. So first things first, I've been doing a lot of genealogy and research in the past couple weeks since we're into the heart of winter, and it's a good time to do that. You know, just take a little... Take a little uh, heaviness off of you and do something that you really love to relax you and genealogy and ancestry is mine. The thing is, is the people that I speak of are not some necessarily somebody that lived 200 years ago, 100 years ago, and I didn't know them. I did know them. So I have a reflection in my life because I had a great, great grandmother. I still have a Nana who's 85 years old and she can validate a lot of the stories that I know of or that I can tell. But here's the thing. I don't know what's changed society. I think we've had it, well, we can go into 17 reasons why, but we all know we've had it really, really easy probably the last 30 or 40 years. We know things changed well after World War II, and we know in the last 20 years, our minds have become googly moogly mush with social media. That's caused us to become weak people, weak women and weak men both. So when hard times come around because of people like that, then you have all these domino effects of people can't handle life, people can't handle stress, people can't handle hard times, people can't handle work, people can't handle famine, people can't handle pandemic. We can't handle stuff. Now, I'm not condemning just you or just me. I'm talking about a collective observation that I have pretty much decided in my own way, in my own mind, that these are the things and these are the reasons why our grandparents, and you know, really when I say grandparents, you could even probably the further, the more you go back, the, the more hardcore they became or were because they had to be. So here they are. Now, First things first, I want to say one little thing in this. If you get your feelings hurt, you know where the unfollow button is. I'm not taking responsibility for anything you don't understand or anything you can't decide on your own, or if you're just plain dumb or if you need a sugar tit today. If you don't know what a sugar tit is, you need to look it up. I said that. 
It's not dirty. It's what they called them. I'm going to make you do the research in Google and find out what it is. So that's what my papa always told me. When I started to complain or I didn't think things were fair or I didn't like something, he'd say, what you need? You need a little sugar tip today, baby? And I knew I better shut my mouth because I wasn't going to get any sympathy. So if you can't handle anything in this video up to this point or even beyond, just click off unfollow and go watch how to make a pound cake today or whatever you need to make or bake and make you feel better because it's not going to be me in this video. And yes, I will let you know that I speak to my husband just like this. We talk about these conversations often, people in my family and especially to my grown men of children. I have three boys, basically all college or beyond. And I think the only way and reason that they're ever going to make it is because mama told them exactly what I'm about to tell you. Let's hope and pray that sticks. It's all we can do. But the number, th number one thing that the, is the difference between you and granny, or maybe even me and granny, is they work their rear ends off. Now, this is cheap because you know this. We all talk about this. We post about this. We say, yeah, we know about how mama and papa work. No, we don't. We don't have a clue. No, we don't have a clue. We, our life does not necessarily depend on everything that we do. We still have the Piggly Wiggly. We still have the Walmart. Yeah, the shelves don't look that good right now. And we know why that is. That's another conversation. But the point is, is they didn't have that necessarily. Their life depended on every single thing that they did every single day. They worked before sun up and beyond sundown. They didn't have trouble sleeping, folks, because they were grueling. They were doing grueling work constantly in the fields, in the kitchen. You know, I think it's so sweet, and I, and I understand it, why women reminisce and talk about, oh, I love to have a wood-cooked stove, and it's just so pretty with the fire. Pater, why aren't you cooking on your wood-cooked wood stove? You know why? Because I don't have enough wood, in my personal opinion yet, to run that thing daily to get me through all the way to spring. That doesn't mean I'm not going to work towards a new goal this coming spring and into next year. That is one. But my point is, is I've done enough work with wood cook stoves and wood stoves to understand that when I see a YouTube video and these people are trying to tell you and tell me they live off wood heat and they've got a, a rick of wood outside and that's all they got. And they're living in a temperature in a place much colder than I do. That's a lie, folks. Your grandmothers and grandfathers did nothing but hardcore labor all day from cutting wood, splitting wood, raising the animals, raising the babies, had three babies on the hip and one on the you know what, and they were still working. We have no concept of the work that they did. That doesn't even come into the idea of maybe they went and did something else. Maybe they were also, they had a mill or, you know, maybe Papa went off to war. Do you know how much how difficult that compounded everybody's life when these events happened over the last 200 years here in this beautiful country. Memo had it hard. I don't know if we will ever understand what all they did. I try to test myself from time to time. That's why I talk about the wood heat. You don't waste those things. I keep them for emergencies because I understand how much wood it would take to go through an entire, just an entire 24 hour period, just to warm the house, just to put the cornbread on the table. It's more than you can imagine. The next thing that they had, well, it's kind of a two in one deal here on number two, but I'm gonna call it discernment. They had discernment. No, they, a lot of them necessarily couldn't read or write. Maybe they only went to the third grade. I know a lot of mine, that's about as far as they went. But you know what? They had discernment. They knew how to pick and choose their battles. They knew what was important. They used the wisdom that their mama and their grandmama gave them. They used the wisdom that their Appalachian roots gave them. They used the wisdom that their native influences gave them. And they knew how to pick and choose. They knew who to be around. They knew who were their friends and who wasn't. They knew who they could trust. They knew who they didn't. They chose wisely and they tightened the circle. They use discernment. Where is that? Where did that go? Why are so many people, I will argue, make so many more foolish decisions today and will argue with the wise over the things that truly, truly saw our great, great, great parent, our grandparents through? 
why would you argue with somebody over things like preparedness in the old ways and choosing good people to be around and having self-discipline? You don't have to have everything on the planet to be happy. Why do you feel you deserve that? Why can't we just use discernment and make good decisions and choose wisely with who we spend our time with and what we do and what skills we learn because we know we need them. We're not wasting our time at the mall. We're wasting our time. We're not wasting our time by learning a skill that we need to learn. What happened to discernment? Granny and Peppa had it. Do you? The second part of number two is their faith in God. I'm not interested if you don't believe in God. That's your business. I pray for you. I pray for you that you take a different path on that. But I'm telling you right now, the people in your past, most likely, for most people, had a strong faith in what, whatever they were doing. They knew that there was a higher power. And they knew that their existence was for an important reason. And that they were supposed to push through whatever tribulation they were going through at the time. Hard work, discernment, the Lord. Yeah. We got to bring that back. Now, the final number three here for this video, and to hopefully really make the statement that I want to make, is they didn't take any bull off of anybody. We have a real problem in our society right now and have for many, many years, in my opinion, of telling people, our young people, our young women, just to ignore it. Don't fuel it. Don't feed the trolls. Now, I want to say this first and foremost. I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and do anything stupid, okay? And I'm not telling anybody just to go cruising for a bruising or to pick a fight. But I'm telling you right now, you know, I get a lot of comments on social media. And most of the time when I get a bunch of nonsense, I don't give you a bit of, I don't give you a lick of attention. Frankly, because I don't have the time and I'm not interested. But once in a blue moon, as you've probably seen from a few videos or posts on social media, I respond to a couple of ugly people every now and then. If I think you, I don't know, maybe you struck a chord. I don't know. Maybe I just felt like you need somebody to put you in your place. You know, the best thing my daddy ever did for me, and I've said this before in a long, in a video long ago, is I had a, I did, I had a bully. She was in high school, and I was in middle school, and she rode the same bus as I did, and she'd cuss me and threaten to beat me up and do all these things. And it got to the point one day where I came home, I did, I came home in tears. And we put up with this for a while. Her younger sister was a brat too. She was more my age. It was just a hot mess. I never responded. I tried to ignore them. I tried to avoid them. And I wasn't the only one that they did this to. But I don't know what happened. One day, it just absolutely, for the final time, just flew all over my daddy. And I said, well, can we go to the principal's office? Or I'm not going to ride the school bus. You know, I was having a fit. I was upset. I was scared. And my daddy looked at me. He said, get your tail out in the front yard. And I said, what? He said, get your hind end out in the front yard. I said, why? He said, because I'm going to teach you how to break somebody's nose. Well, what? I was like, what? He said, I'm telling you right now, you're going to break her nose. Tomorrow when you get on the school bus and she threatens to beat you up again, if she, I, he said, if she touches you, now, I'm not saying you swing first, necessarily. He said, I'm telling you right now, if she gets in your face, if she pushes you, she touches you, she shoves you. I said, I'm telling you right now, you better break her nose. Daddy, da you know, I'm flipping out, right? He said, I'm going to tell you what. If you don't break her nose, you're going to have bigger problems to deal with if you don't, and that's going to be me. And he, I said, what if they kick me out of school? What if they kick me off the bus? He said, I'll deal with that. He said, but today, 
it's time. You're gonna learn how to stand up for yourself. Well, I'll have you know, from that moment forth, that was a life-changing experience. And I, as silly as that sounds, I'm telling you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, stop teaching your children to be treaded on. If they can be treaded on people at school, if they can be treaded by people of, you know, in any which way but up and on social media, that's the way they're going to be the rest of their life. Now, again, I'm, I'm telling you to use your discernment, okay? And I'm telling you to pick and choose wisely. But no, I'm not going to sit around and ignore somebody that calls me names or tells me I'm this or da-da-da-da-da-da. First of all, we all know most of these people are cowards and they'd never say it to your face if they are online. So I do understand that. But at the same time, there is a line here in understanding that your grandparents didn't stand around, sit around, or go to church on Sunday or go to the general store on Thursday and let anybody stand around and talk to them like that. Because you know why most people didn't? they knew they were going to get their nose broken or worse. I'm serious. My grandmothers would not tolerate that type of behavior. They didn't take it from their kids. They didn't take it from their neighbor. They didn't take it from their sister. They certainly weren't going to take it from some lady at the dry cleaners or down at the Walmart or the A&P. What makes you think you should tolerate that type of stuff? Stop letting all these trolls and bullies dictate to you and to your children who they are and what they are and what they believe and what they should have to put up with. A lot of times, some people, if they get pushed back a little bit, sometimes that might be the medicine they need to save, the, save themselves and their own lives. Finally, I say again, use your discernment. But no, sir, no, ma'am. You're not going to come onto my property or come into my life or invade my property on social media or invade my space or invade my forums or at the Walmart invade me and tell and tread on me and tell me I'm this or I'm that or I'm not. No, you're not. That's not how we're going to talk to each other. Papa didn't take it. Mamma didn't take it. Stop teaching your kids that they have to tolerate being punching bags by people. That's how Granny made it. And that's how a lot of people are not. See, that's what I mean. Your grandparents didn't have less problems. Those weren't the good old days. They were harder. They had it so much harder than you. How come they made it? I want to be very careful with what I say here because I don't want somebody to think that I'm trying to be disrespectful in terms of people's personal problems. But folks, the reality is people in our past had PTSD. They lost their spouses. Many of them had two or three spouses simply because people passed on because of so many different situations. Women died in, died in childbirth like crazy. People were sick. People were hungry. Men were at war. People ate the same thing literally nine months out of the year because there was no other option. How did they mentally get through these things? It's because of one, two, and three. They worked through their stress every day. They didn't go to a therapist. And I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not putting that down. But what I'm saying is a lot of them, they didn't have that 150 years ago. Not here. They worked it out. They talked it out. They punched it out. They made it happen because they knew they had to. And at the end of the day, they knew that they, in, in the end, they knew that they had to turn everything over to God. And finally, they didn't let anybody push them around. Fact. So to the kind lady, I think she meant well who said on my Instagram that I should just ignore ugly comments. I want you to know that 99% of the time, I, I really, really do. But at the same time, I think it's important to respond and let young people, especially young women, see. No, I'm not going to be talked to that way. I'm not going to be downplayed that way. We have to encourage young people to do all of these things, to stand up for themselves. If you want them to make it, 
if you want to make it through whatever all is ever coming our way, you're going to have to dig deep and get the grit that Granny had. Hope you're well. Hope you're warm. We'll see you on the next video.